Uh, good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Hello? Hello? Yes, you are audible, yes. Am I audible? Okay. Uh, the connection is a bit slow, so please be patient. Uh, uh, let me start sharing my slide. All right, uh, so today we will uh, discuss this about feature engineering and the outliers and then we split the data into uh, testing and train and then uh, we develop a model, uh, but that is not always enough. Uh, we need to do a uh, feature engineering so that uh, the, the model will be robust or we can increase the, uh, the performance of the, the model by applying uh, feature engineering. So what's feature engineering? It's a process of uh, creating new features or transforming existing features uh, so that the, the performance of the uh, ML will in increase, right? Uh, it, 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 can, it can be, I mean, the, the, the feature engineering can be from the existing features or we can create and in involve that data into a format uh, that can be easily understood by the model right so the the main goal of uh, <coughs> the feature engineering is to improve the model's accuracy by providing it with more meaningful and uh, relevant information um, so uh, features are uh, variables or unique properties uh, of a particular record in, in, in the data set. So by carrying out uh, engineering or feature engineering, which includes data manipulation, uh, cleaning, transfer, transforming, uh, it will provide better and uh, it's to improve its performance, right? So enhanced model performance with uh, well-engineered features, right? And uh, the second one is improved data uh, representation and pattern extraction. So properly engineered or transformed features uh, will provide reliable and detailed insights into the, the uh, data, right? So this also aids data scientists or analysts in drawing out valuable conclusions uh, from the uh, from the data set. Uh, the other uh, importance is dimensionality reduction or prevention of uh, overfitting. Right when the, the features are too many, uh, sometimes including all of them might uh, result in overfitting. So in that case, uh, we need to reduce the number of features that we are uh, going to use for the model, right? So uh, its importance is uh, dimensionality reduction and prevention of uh, overfitting. Uh, the other uh, advantage or importance is handling missing data 
uh, effectively uh, using uh, feature engineering. Uh, we can handle the missing data uh, without harming the performance of the, the model. And the other one is uh, we can incorporate uh, domain knowledge into the model uh, using uh, feature engineering. So these are the uh, importance of uh, feature engineering. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, I'm just checking. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please raise your hand and mute your mic and speak up. Uh, is it clear? What's feature engineering and its importance? Okay. Um, so what are the processes involved in uh, feature engineering, right? So as I, as we said earlier, uh, we, we, we do some processing uh, or uh, feature engineering to improve the uh, model performance. But what, what exactly are the processes that we need to take? Mainly there are five processes. Uh, the first one is feature creation. Uh, second one, feature transformation. Third, feature extraction, feature selection and lastly uh, feature scaling right so feature creation it's a process of uh, generating a new feature uh, based on domain knowledge or by observing the the patterns in the data right we we, we can create uh, a new feature uh, from the data set uh, by observing the the pattern in the data or by uh, incorporating uh, domain knowledge. It's a form of feature engineering that can significantly improve the performance of the uh, ML model, right? Because we are incorporating uh, domain knowledge into it, uh, that will uh, alleviate the performance of the uh, machine learning model. Um, the, the types of feature uh, creation, uh, we will have, I'm oh, sorry, we will have uh, domain specific ones. Uh, as I said earlier, we can create new features based on uh, the domain knowledge. Such as creating features based on business rules or industry standards. And the other one is data-driven. And understanding its pattern, uh, we can create a new future um, by observing its pattern, such as calculating aggregations or creating interaction uh, features, right? And the last one is uh, synthetic uh, feature creation. That means generating new feature by combining uh, existing features or synthesizing new data points. Uh, these are uh, the uh, types of uh, feature creation. Uh, the second process is feature transformation. Uh, that means transforming the feature into more suitable representation for the uh, machine learning model, uh, like the the, the, the hot encoding, etc. So it's done to ensure that the model can effectively learn from the, the from the data, right? Uh, for example, if we have a categorical uh, data, uh, the machine learning model can only work on numerical data. So we need to transform that. So the types of feature transformation, the first one is uh, normalization. That means we have to uh, scale the features so that they will have similar range, right? It can be between uh, zero, and, zero and one. Uh, that will uh, prevent some features from dominating others. So uh, normalization is uh, important. And the other is scaling. Uh, it's a technique used to transform numerical variables uh, to have similar scale, right? So that they can be uh, compared more easily.
right? For example, one uh, one variable or one feature might be like in millions of dollars, and the other can be in trillions of dollars. So we we need to scale them, right? Or uh, like we we have to multiply them with their multiplier uh, so that one variable can't dominate the other. So a rescaling feature to have similar scales, such as uh, having a standard division of one or to make such a model uh, considers uh, all the feature equality. Uh, the, the other uh, is encoding, as I said earlier, we need to transform categorical features into uh, numerical representations, uh, like the one hot encoding or the lim uh, encoding, etc. Uh, and the last one is just transformation. That means transforming the, the feature using mathematical operations to change the uh, distribution or scale the features, like uh, taking the logarithm or the square root. or uh, some other uh, mathematical admission to the ML model. So this is uh, done by uh, combining uh, the existing features, transforming them, or uh, aggregating them. And there are different types of extractions, feature extractions, uh, like dimensionality reduction, uh, as I said earlier, uh, sometimes we need to reduce the number of uh, features uh, in order to alleviate the problem of uh, overfitting, right? So by transforming the data into a lower dimension space, while retaining the important uh dimensionality reduction and the other type of feature extraction is feature combination uh, which means combining two or more features uh to create a new one right we, we can combine uh one or more i mean two or more uh, features to create um a new one uh, for example interaction between two features uh, in, in in some way right and the other is feature aggregation. That means uh, aggregating features to create a new one, uh, like calculating the mean, the sum, or the count uh, of a set of features. And the other uh, feature extraction is feature transformation by transforming it. Uh, for example, taking the, logar uh, the logarithm transformation of a feature uh, with uh, a skewed distribution uh, that will uh, give us uh, a new representation for the, the skewed distribution, right? Um, and the other one is feature selection. That means uh, a process of selecting subset of the relevant features from the data set to be used in the um, in the model right uh, we 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 want to i mean we have to select the more uh, impactful features for the the for the model so it's it's an important step uh, in feature engineering process as it can have a significant impact on the model's performance uh, and there are three types of uh, feature selection um, these are the uh, filter method, that means based on statistical measures. Uh, and the other is a wrapper method, that's based on evaluation of the feature subset using a specific machine learning algorithm. Uh, so the feature subset that results in the best form uh, performance will be selected, right? Uh, in, in, the, in the filter method, we, we use statistical methods before we apply the, the, the model itself, right? But in the wrapper method, uh, we use um, 
and machine and machine learning algorithm to select the subset itself. Um, so we, we, we select those by comparing the, the their performance. And the embedded model, it's it's also So based on the machine learning algorithm, based on training, uh, it's a process of uh, transforming features so that they have similar scale. Uh, this is also important uh, because it will affect uh, the, the performance of the model because one variable might, might be dominant over others. So we need to uh, scale the, the features. So uh, there are around four types of feature scaling. The, the min-max scaling, that means scaling the features to be um, a specific range. Uh, like between zero and one. Uh, that that can be done by max uh, a mean of zero and standard deviation of one uh, by subtracting the mean and dividing divide it by the standard deviation that will uh, rescale the features and the other one is robust scaling uh, th this is for uh, outliers mainly rescaling the the features to be robust to outliers by dividing them uh, by their interquartile range um yeah so so these are some of the, the processes involved in process uh, in feature engineering and the, the steps uh in feature engineering uh, includes data cleaning or data cleansing uh, like handling the uh, missing values uh, handling the outliers uh, etc and then we will have uh, data transformation and we will have uh, feature extraction and uh, we will have feature selection and then feature iteration right so two days i mean uh, th this this tutorial is mainly focused on uh, feature selection uh, using uh, the weight of evidence and information value uh, we can select uh, features out of the uh, given data set. <clears throat> so feature selection involves selecting the most relevant feature from the data set for use in the, the, in the model, right? So this can uh, include techniques like correlation analysis, mutual information, and uh, stepwise regression. There are, there are different ways to um, select uh, the most important features from the data set and feature iteration uh, it involves refining and improving the features based on the performance of the the ml model um, so this can include like adding new new features removing redundant features and uh, transforming features in different ways uh, so these are uh, some of the the the, the steps that we do in uh, feature engineering. Uh, is it clear? Are there any questions? Am I still audible? Hello? Abraham, Junior, anyone? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, it's clear. And uh, no questions? All right. So far, it's um, clear, yes. All right, good. Uh, so uh, we have two important uh, concepts that we need to discuss. Uh, these are the weight of evidence and information value. And uh, these two will help us uh, selecting the most important features from the uh, from the data set, right? And those terms have been used extensively for feature ex selection across multiple fields um, especially for credit score models i think that's uh, your 
challenge for this week. Uh, so the w WOE or weight of evidence, it indicates the degree of the predictive power of a, a, a given feature or a given variable, right? Um, so basically what we will do is uh, the, the, the target variable will be kind of encoded like the, the one hot encoder or the label uh, encoder uh, into bad and good or event and non-events. And then we compute the uh, weight of evidence value uh, using a, a formula. We will see it next. Uh, so it's calculated um, using the following steps, right? Um, depending on the, the, the data, if the data doesn't have any none, I mean, uh, doesn't have any linearity, uh, sometimes we may split the data into beans, right? So for, for continuous features, we, we split the data into beans. And then for each bean, we calculate the percentage of observations under events or like good and percentage of uh, observations under non events like bad, right? Uh, for example, paying the a loan uh, is a good event, so we call it event, and uh, loan default uh, will be a non event or it's a bad, right? So we 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 going we going to calculate the uh, ratio of those. Uh, and then we take the, the logarithm. So we calculate the uh, weight of evidence using this formula. That's LAN or log of percent of events. That means percent of good uh, divided by percent of bad or percent of non-events. Then this calculate, I mean, this amount or this number will indicate the predictive power of uh, each bin in in a feature, right? Since we uh, split the data into bins, uh, this value will tell us the predictive power of the, the those uh, categories or bins, not the whole uh, uh, the, the whole uh, data for uh, for that feature. Uh, that that's what the uh, IV or information value will be used. It will be the the, the combination or the combined effect of the uh, WOE for each bin. Uh, so uh, we can then use the IV or the information value to aggregate the uh, weight of evidence to get the predictive power of the feature as a whole, right? So it's calculated as since we have uh, H bins, uh, H in this case is the number of pins. Uh, I should have write it here. Uh, it's given by the sum uh, one to H. That means one to uh, up to the number of pins. Uh, we multiply the uh, weight of evidence for each pin by the difference of the percentage of events and non-events. Right? Percentage of events minus uh, percentage of non-events. So the it, it 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 might be positive or negative. The IB, uh, even the WO. Um, yeah. So uh, the IB is an indicator of overall predictive strengths of a feature. It 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 tells us the overall predictive strengths. Uh, the 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 weight of evidence only tells us for each bin or for each category, right? So, um, the, the inter uh, which means if we have uh, an IV value less than 0 0.02, it means it's useless, right? Uh, it doesn't have any predictive uh, predictive power. Uh, 
uh, if it is between 0 0.02 to 0 0.1, uh, it's, it, it, its power is weak, or we call it weak predictor. And if it's between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3, it's medium predictor. Uh, and if it's between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5, uh, it's a strong, a strong predictor. Uh, and if it's greater than 0 0.5, uh, this will be a suspicious predictive power that, that might not be uh, realistic. Right? So the two extreme uh, values for the IV are 0 0.02. If that's less than 0 0.02, it's useless. So we will uh, not include it in the, in the model. And also, if it's greater than uh, 0 0.05, um, uh, that number might not uh consider as um a good predictor so we might not include it in the uh, model um i think that's all for today if you guys have any questions uh please ask uh and there are um python packages for calculating the uh, weight of evidence and the uh, uh, information value. Uh, you can use the, I think the experts and the WOE package, you can install it uh, directly uh, from PIP. Are there any questions? Is it clear? Hello. Uh, if you if you go to Kaggle and look for um, uh, for the um, information value and the weight of evidence, you will have a lot of codes out there. Uh, how to identify an event as good or bad? Uh, as I said earlier, it's it's domain uh, domain knowledge i mean you have to um analyze the the, the data the, you have to do the eda right and then uh, for example for the uh, credit um or for the loan uh for giving a loan uh, you you need to understand the data or uh, the behavior of the the person right if for example he pay his loan um timely um if uh yeah the 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 the, the, the variables in the given data set will will tell you what's bad and what's good right so paying a loan timely is a good But uh, hot encoder, like zero and one, right? You can give one for good and zero for bad. That's how you uh, identify them. Is that clear, Abraham? Uh, the the bean size it depends on the data that that's why we need to do the eda right the the bean size uh, you you have to experiment and when when you get the right uh, bean size you you will uh, is it clear abraham 
Yes. How to identify good or bad? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how and to identify bean size? I think uh, when you explain the bean size, the network uh, is somehow uh, uh, disconnected. I didn't hear you oh, much. The, the, the... Okay. But the, uh, the, for the bean size, there is no specific. There is no specific specific formula, right? You have to experiment. Before we do feature engineering, we said uh, we need to clean up the data, we need to identify the outliers, etc. Right? And then we do uh, EDA, like correlation um, aggregation. We, we have to look the, the 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 pattern. Once you do that, uh, you calculate the WO by taking uh, beans of some size, right? And you cal you calculate for each bean, and then the, the overall effect will be the IV, the information value, right? So the bean size, it depends. There is no uh, 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 an exact formula. Okay, it depends on the number of entries of uh, my data. Right? Yeah. Of course, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Thank you, yeah, yeah. You're welcome. We can, uh, you can ask on Slack and we will we'll get back to you as soon as we can all right have a good day bye